Hey guys, in this video we are going to be analyzing Franklin Resources. Now, Franklin Resources has an earnings report dropping on October 29th or later that week. That's important to know because we know that stock prices can dramatically rise or drop when an earnings report comes out, depending on how the company's been doing. Franklin Resources of the stocks on my watch list is a two star. I rate the stocks on my watch list by three star, the most fundamentally sound two star beneath that and one star the least fundamentally sound but still sound enough to make the watch list franklin resources is a two star and they're currently at nineteen dollars and thirteen cents a share yahoo analysts project that they can move up to $22.41 in the next 12 months. And now, that, that would be a 17.15% increase if that should happen. So let's jump over into the fundamentals for this company and see how they're doing fundamentally because we know when we look for a stock to buy we're looking for two things the first thing we want to see is that the company is fundamentally sound and then once we see it's fundamentally sound then we want to look at the technicals to see when it starts moving back up so let's jump over and look at its fundamentals. So now we are in the Stock Sage app, which we use for two reasons. One, to find our fundamentally sound companies. And second, so that we can see all the figures for those companies to see if they um, meet our criteria and we know that what the stock say job does is it checks the 52 week low the annual low price the stocks that are at their annual low price on the stock market every single day and it pulls up all the companies that one have total assets above total liabilities on their balance sheet and have positive earnings for at least three of the last five years because we know that many companies on the stock market don't have positive earnings they're actually losing money every year so this app pulls up the one with positive earnings th at least three of the last five years many of them you'll see with positive earnings all five years And if we go through this list of companies, it's a pretty long list this week because a lot of things dropped in the market this week. And we have these filters at the top that we can use to narrow down the list even more. The first one is for stock buybacks because when a company well a company can do two three things to make money one they can make money by doing what they do for a living if their car manufacturers sell cars second they can make money by just borrowing it from the bank and the third way they can make money is by selling more shares of their stock using their own stock almost like an ATM. We love when they do it the first way by doing what they do for a living. Borrowing 
only when it's going to be used to grow the company, but not borrowing excessively. And selling shares of their stock, we don't want to see them constantly doing that. However, what we love to see is when a company pays down their debts and when they buy back shares of their stock. And this first filter lets us know which companies bought back shares of their own stock for three of the last five years, four of the last five years, or all five years. And we said that the app automatically pulls up companies that have total assets above total liabilities on their balance sheet. But we also want them, if they're going to have a strong balance sheet, to have current assets above current liabilities. And for that, we turn on this filter current assets above current liabilities. And with those two filters on, we'll see our list is still long. It's a little shorter, a little shorter, but it's still a long list. But this third filter, this is for companies that have a 10% profit margin for the last five years, 10% or above, or 20% or above for the last five years. And if I choose companies with 10% or above, it brings this list down to five companies. And if I choose companies with 20% or above, there's none that are 20% or above for the last five years on this list. Now, we know the list changes every day. Different companies hit the 52-week low. But as of this week, there's no company that exceeded 10% all five years. Our last filter is for companies that have a dividend yield that's above 4%, which is actually pretty rare. Not many companies are doing a dividend yield that high. And if we click that filter, we have one company. So all of these companies, we see only one that's on this list today that meets all four of these criteria. Stock buybacks all five years, strong balance sheet with current and total assets above current and total liabilities, profit margin above 10%, all five years and greater than a 4% profit margin. Now, when I look at the earnings per share for this company, there's one thing that I'm seeing that I don't like. I prefer to see a company where the earnings per share is increasing over the years. But this one isn't doing that. They was at $2.37 in 2019, $1.62 in 2020, $3.74 in 2021. So it increased that year. Then $2.64 in 2022, and it dropped again in 2023, $1.80. So now we're going to click on the ticker symbol for this company and see what it is currently. And we see that currently 
the earnings per share is a dollar sixty one so remember it can increase the year isn't over yet we're just in September but so far it's lower than what it was in 2023 in any event when we click on the ticker symbol now we get to go into the app and analyze what it is and it tells you Franklin Resources is a personally owned is a publicly owned asset management holding company so you have the description at the top they give you an idea of what the company does and the first thing that we come upon is repeated like we did on the home page we have the earnings per share for the previous five years and we have a projected section over here to the right which I'm going to show you what that projected section is for we also have the high prices of this stock for the last five years and the low prices of this stock for the last five years so Franklin Templeton in 2019 they went from $20.41 to $28.55 and it shows us at the bottom that was a 39.89% increase in 2020 COVID lockdown year they went from $12.33 to $22.46 and that was an 82.19% increase in 2021 they went from $20.57 to $33.75. That was a 64.11% increase. In 2022, they went from $18.64 to $32.42 that was a 73.98 percent increase and in 2023 they went from $21.11 to $32.01 that was a 51.63 percent increase over the course of that year now if I could figure out how high this stock was going to move, I could put it in here and we'll see what's going to happen. And I can figure it out in the app with the use of the PE ratios. But I'm going to use the simple way right now. I'm going to Go to Yahoo Finance, put in the ticker symbol, and if I look at the one year target estimate at the bottom of the page. It is $22.41. I'm going to type that in. Bear in mind, when Yahoo uses their estimates, they may be conservative. So the stock can actually move higher than that, but they're being careful, so they may use a conservative estimate. 
I'm going to hit enter, and it will actually show me that if this stock moves up to that price, that will be a 17.15% increase over the course of that 12 months. If we go down a little further, we have all of our statistical data about the stock. When is the earnings report going to drop? What's their dividend yield? What's their price? So this is a $19.13 stock. Here's the earnings report repeated again. The current PE. And what is the dividend yield? We're going to go back to the PE, something very important with that. The book value is 24.93 so it's higher than the stock price and this stock has 22 million no. 522 million 998,000 outstanding shares If we, we want to go back to the P.E. ratio, because we said the current P.E. ratio was 11.88. But did you know that if you're looking at the P.E. ratio for the previous five years and compare them to now, you can actually tell when a stock is at an affordable price or not. You can have a stock that's overpriced and you can have a stock that's at an affordable price. And you can't tell that by looking at the stock's price itself. You might have a stock that's $20 a share and that stock is actually more expensive than a $2,000 a share stock. What tells you is the numbers. If we look at the P.E. ratios for this stock, in 2019, the low P.E. ratio was 8.59. 2020, it was 7.59. 2021, it was 5.5. 2022, it was 7.05, and in 2023, it was 11.72, and right now, it's at 11.88, and what that tells me is, in terms of P.E. ratio, this stock is the most expensive that it's been at in the previous five years. So, this stock's been at seven twice. 7.59 in 2020. 7.05 in 2022. We're going to look and see what would happen if this stock were to drop to 7 again. Okay. So we have 7.59, 7.05. Let's split the difference. Let's try it around 7.30. Let's say that this stock were to fall 
to a PE of 7.30. Right now, the stock is at 19.13. I'm going to do a quick calculation. I'm going to calculate 17.30, which is, let's say that the I'm sorry, not 17. I'm going to calculate 7.30 times the current earnings per share, which is 1.61 equals 11.75. Now, what does that tell me? That that tells me that if this stock were to stay at the earnings per share of 1.61 and the P.E. ratio was to fall to 7.30, this stock would drop from $19.13 to $11.75. So by looking at the low PE ratios, we can tell if a stock is in the buy range, and we can also tell, we can also speculate where the stock price would fall to if it was to fall to a different PE. And it's another reason why when we buy stocks, we use these fundamentals to tell us what to buy, but we look at the candlestick charts to tell us when to buy. We look to see when it starts moving back up if the low PEs are aligned and tell us it's a good time to buy. Low PEs are aligned with the current PE. In any event, now that we looked at the price movement for the stock over the years, now let's take a look at the fundamentals for the company because when you're buying shares of a stock you're really just buying shares of a company and there are a lot of very smart investors on the market work for banks and institutions they're called institutional investors. And when they see good opportunities, they buy. And the things that make stock prices go up is when more people are buying than selling. So we want to be aware of those opportunities. So we want to look at the three financial statements which tell us the performance of the company, which are the income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement. And first we have the income statement. Now, in 2019, Franklin Resources made Five billion seven hundred and seventy four million five hundred thousand. Of that, they retained one billion one hundred and ninety five million seven hundred thousand after paying all expenses. That was a twenty point seventy one percent profit margin, which is a very decent profit margin for stocks. 
as we as was demonstrated earlier a lot of companies on the stock market aren't making above a 10 percent profit margin con set continuously in 2020 covid lockdown year they made six billion five hundred and sixty six million five hundred thousand of that they remain retained seven hundred and ninety eight million nine hundred thousand that was a fourteen point three five percent profit margin in twenty twenty one they made eight billion four hundred and twenty five million five hundred thousand in overall sales and revenue after paying all expenses they retain one billion eight hundred and thirty one million two hundred thousand that was a twenty one point seven three percent profit margin their second time over twenty percent in twenty twenty two they made eight billion two hundred and seventy five million three hundred thousand after paying all expenses they retained one million one billion i'm sorry two hundred and ninety one million nine hundred thousand that was a fifteen point sixty one percent profit margin and in 2023, they made seven billion eight hundred and forty-nine billion four hundred thousand. Of that, they retained eight hundred and eighty-two million eight hundred thousand. That was an eleven point two five percent profit margin. Now, we're seeing pretty decent sales and revenue from them and a pretty decent profit margin as well, above 10%. Like we said, we have a lot of companies that are at the 52-week low right now, but when we chose to see the ones that are above 5%, and meet the other criteria it broke that big list down to just five companies now we're coming to the balance sheet section which is current assets above current liabilities we always want current assets to be higher than current liabilities and total assets and total liabilities. We always want total assets to be above total liabilities. But I sort of have a shortcut for that, which we're going to go through in a moment. The first thing I'm going to look for is the return on equity. In 2019, it was 12.07. 2020, 7.9. 2021, 16.32. 2022, 11.26. And 2023, 7.41. Return on equity is not the greatest but not horrible either. But when we come down to the debt to equity, we like our debt to equity to be under 200%. Now, if you're looking at companies like banks, the debt to equity could be outrageous. It could be around 900% or so because Banks use money to make money. So any free money they have, they're using it to make more money. 
But in this case, their debt to equity in 2019 is 31.91. In 2020, it's 86.07. 2021, 101.79, 2022, 124.06, and 2023, 138.86. It is growing in the more frequent years, but still under 200%, which would mean when we come to our balance sheet, we can confirm that current assets exceed current liabilities and total assets exceed total liabilities just by looking at the last slide and seeing there are no minus symbols. Now when we get to the last one, the cash flow statement. We see a few things, three in particular. First, we see the total dividends they paid out for each year. Not going to read each one. I'll start with the first. Just read the first. In 2019, they gave out five hundred and eighteen million six hundred thousand in dividends. The second and third line is how many shares of how much in terms of shares of stock this company sold and how many how much in terms of shares of stock this company bought back so we see for example in 2019 they sold 23 million 300 thousand worth but they bought back 754 million 500 thousand worth even though they did sell, they bought back a lot more than they sold. In 2020, they sold 20,600,000 worth. They bought back 218,200,000 worth. Bought back a lot more once again. 2021. They sold 22,300,000 worth, bought back 208,200,000 worth. 2023, they sold 25,100,000 worth, bought back 180,800,000 worth. 2023, they bought back 23 million 300,000 worth. I'm sorry, they sold 23 million 300,000 worth. Bought back 256 million 300,000 worth. So this company bought back a lot more shares than they sold these five years, which we love to see. as investors. Lastly, we can look at the free cash flow for the last five years. 32,100,000 in 2019, 917,700,000 in 2020, 1,166,100,000 in 2021, 1,866,000, 1,866,000,000 in 2022, 
2022 and 989,900,000 in 2023. But companies who pay dividends, they actually pay their dividends from their free cash flow. So if you have a company that's paying a dividend, you want to make sure that that company can afford to pay the dividend that they're paying you. Some of them cannot. Some of them may be borrowing money just to pay you a dividend. Well, you can tell that by looking at this last line free cash flow after dividends. And I actually said in 2019, this company had 32,100,000 in free cash flow. I was incorrect. They had negative 32,100,000 in free cash flow. They didn't even have positive free cash flow that year. Thus, when they gave out the dividend, they were negative 550,700,000. But that's okay. We can deal with one year situation. We don't know what happened that year. Maybe they bought other businesses or whatever. But if we're seeing it regularly, that's presenting a problem. And we noticed that in 2020, the COVID lockdown year, after paying dividends, they still had 384,500,000. In 2021, after paying dividends, they still had 606,400,000. In 2022, after paying the dividends, they still had 1,283,300,000. In 2023, after paying the dividend, it dropped some, but they still had 382,600,000. So they're good for the dividend that they paid. And lastly, we can look at some information that may be helpful to know for you. Now, this information is not automatically pulled into the app, but you can easily find it at outside sources. One of them is Yahoo Finance. We said that there's a there can be a large amount of institutional investors that buy the stock, and insiders are people who work in are involved in the company. This company actually has a large amount of insider investors because generally a lot of companies have under 1% of inside investors. This company has 46.73% of insider investors, which means those who work for or are involved with the company really must believe in it, that they're buying up so much of their stock. For institutional investors, they're 49.99%. Now you can find that information by going to Yahoo Finance and clicking on
statistics. And that's statistics. It's right under share statistics. Also, the dividend date and the ex-dividend date is found under share statistics. Dividend date being when they pay their dividends. Ex-dividend date being when you have to own the shares before to be eligible for their next dividend. Lastly, we have the management. Miss Jennifer M. Johnson, born 1964, is the president, CEO, and director of Franklin Resources. And Franklin Resources, Inc. is also known as Franklin Templeton. She became the CEO in February of 2020. And Franklin Resources is in the asset management industry, financial services sector. And we can find that information right here on the profile. As we go down a little bit. We see our industry and sector and the whole management structure. So that's it for our analysis of Franklin Resources, guys. I look forward to speaking to you in the next video. And by the way, for those who are not familiar with the name Franklin Resources, if you have heard of Franklin Templeton, that's Franklin Resources. In any event, look forward to speaking to you in the next video. Have a great night.